Well, hello, it's that time. Summer is in full swing here. So I need to go around my house and set everything up for Camp Mom. You guys know how I like to set things up, try to organize my life, try to get my life together. It doesn't always work out, but I do my best. I just had the kids bring me their tote bins, so I'm going to replenish their, uh, this is like their crafting bins. Each of my children have one. So I'm going to replenish their arts and crafts I'm gonna make a summer treat with you. I have to make the summer bucket list. I need to restock the concession stand upstairs. I'm really excited about that, honestly. And then the fridge, last year, uh, my dreams came true when I had like drinks in the fridge. I don't even drink anything other than water, but we had bottles of water and then seltzer water. I have something exciting to share with you when I restock the fridge, so uh, remind me about that. Oh, and then I got some new items off Amazon that are like for summertime, so I'll share those with you. Some of them seem unique and exciting, so I'm pumped about it. Maybe I'll share a DIY summer craft. I'm pretty lofty, like the list is so long, it's ridiculous. Oh, I have to reprint their summer expectation list, so like their, check, their summer checklist in the morning. And uh, oh, well, that's enough. We have a lot to do, so I'm gonna get done as much as I can. First thing I'm gonna, do is the summer bucket list because the other day we were all sitting around the whole family sitting around the table and we made a list of things i was like i don't want to make the poster board right now but let's just make a list so alex wrote everything down i have a few things to add to it and if you don't know what a summer bucket list is i don't know what to say to you but it's i just get a really big poster board and i make you know, I, we list out everything, all the goals for that summer, everything that my kids want to do. Even if it, even if we don't get to all of them, it's like, hey, we're bored right now, what should we do? And then it just gives us a plan for the summertime and just makes everything more fun. I'm sure you've seen them around Pinterest and other places. They can get really complicated. I like to make it simple. So, you know, I'm just gonna do it right here. I should reference how I did this last year, just to see what I even wrote. I think I just wrote summer bucket list and then wrote everything out. Uh, it's all going to be great. We've got a pretty extensive list. And then I thought the worst part about this is throughout the day, I'll think of something and then I'll say, oh, we should add that. And then I forget what it was. Yesterday, I feel like I came out with something really cool, but I didn't write it down. I don't think I have yet to remember the thing that I was thinking of, I already messed up on the poster board. Luckily, I bought like 10 of these, mostly because the kids said that they wanted to have some to play with during the summer. So I found a pack of them, or maybe it was a pack of three or five, but we got a couple of them. Anyway, instead of getting a new poster board and completely trashing this one, I just turned it around because who the heck cares? And the only reason I messed up was because I forgot to like switch out the color, which I knew was inevitable. Uh, but I don't think I messed up the rest of the time. So there's that. And all I'm doing is just writing it in a line, like nothing fancy. And I feel like last year I may have made lines for myself because I mean, thinking back or looking back, I don't even know if I have a picture. I should probably look back at the video, but I feel like my lines were much m more clean. <laughs> Whereas these are kind of sloping upwards, which I feel like if I remember correctly from elementary school, um, we did like a writing test or what, what is it called? Handwriting analysis, something like that. Okay. And from my recollection, if you have handwriting that slopes in an upward hill, you know, if it goes upward as you write on a, you know, non lined paper, I feel I should Google this just to see if there's any like real context behind it, but it it's supposed to mean that you're like more optimistic. And if you write in a downward slope, it means you're more of a pessimist. If you write even keeled, you're more of a realist. I would like to think I'm more of a realist. And the reason that I'm really writing on an upward slope is mainly because this poster board is huge and I didn't have any lines. <laughs> Hold on. So I Googled it and I was right. It's, isn't it crazy? The things that we remember, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just some random day in elementary school. Anyway, so Google says an upward slant from the baseline shows an optimistic viewpoint while downward indicates a pessimistic mood, a pessimistic mood. And then there's even more about it. Direction of lines, uh, ascending lines are associated with optimistic people. Basically the same thing, just in different words, 
Oh, oh, a change in mood and emotional stability of the writer can change the direction of the lines. Isn't that crazy? Well, I guess writing a summertime bucket list got me in the mood. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so for the things that I'm writing on my bucket list, you know, we sat around the table, we talked to our kids, and they had a lot of input on this. And um, that's always a good thing to get them pumped up for summertime. But also, like, a lot of these are family activities, and a lot of them are fun. Hopefully, we get to all of them, but they don't always have to cost money. It's, you know, we have things on here like volunteer or help a neighbor, make a new friend, things like that, where it doesn't always have to be, like, go to Adventure Island, like the very first box the only one that I can really read says Adventure Island on there. And so, it, so I just wanted to remind you, like, it doesn't always have to be about that. I think I wrote write a letter and send it. So make a pen pal or something like that. And then I do have on my phone a running list of things that I need to add to it. You'll see in a second when you see the ending that I did leave some space for improvement. And, the you know, as summertime goes by, there'll be more things that we want to add to it. So on my little list here, I have crumble cookies. So I think there's one opening up near us. Maybe we'll make a trip to crumble cookie. Probably spend a fortune on getting some crumble cookies. And by the way, have you ever had a crumble cookie? I have. I'm not really, really impressed with them. I actually got mad. Like, like I had a crumble cookie before the hype. And so I was like, what the heck is this? It's falling apart. Who the heck wants to eat a cookie that just falls apart? So I'm going to give it another chance. It was years ago when we had it. So, you know, second time's a charm. Everyone deserves a second chance. And then I have a visit to the ice cream shop because the kids want to make like an ice cream board too. That's on our list. And I thought, well, maybe to another day we'll go to, you know, take a trip to the ice cream shop. There's a local parlor near us. That's amazing. And then <laughs> one of our cousins suggested country line dancing. And I thought that would be fun. Like that's a throw on some country music, learn a line dance off YouTube. I thought that'd be amazing. And then, um, I need to add make cotton candy. I bought a cotton candy machine, just like a little one, a month or two ago, maybe a few months ago, maybe at the beginning of the year. I don't remember, but I have one in my closet and um, that wasn't on the list. And you better believe we're going to bust it out one day. So I might as well have something to check off the list. And then, you know, we have other things on here. Um, I'm trying to look, make a, nope, can't read any of that. Can you guys? <laughs> oh my gosh, my eyesight is so horrible. Try a new food. That's another one that Eleanor came up with. She also had a screen free day, like, you know, with no electronics and stuff. And I just thought, man, that's awesome. Unplug, I think is what it was called, an unplug day. And then we threw on their chore day because that's a way to get pumped up. <laughs> anyway, I just threw it up here with a couple of tacks and easy peasy. No thought involved, you know, just fun. So here it is. I may have put it a little high, but that's, I just, want it out of their reach, but they do like checking them off so we can always pull up a stool or something. Anyway, here's the bucket list. I could have made it cutesy. Maybe I'll pull it back down, have Eleanor, the kids make some watermelons or sunshines on it or whatever, but I'll give you an overview of what we have thrown on our summer bucket list. Such a cute idea and it doesn't have to be anything fancy like my handwriting. What is that? But it's done and it's looking awesome. Going to encourage us to have a really great summer. Uh, I wanted to say something, but I forgot, so hopefully I said it in the voiceover. But I do have to put together their summer binders with their summer expectations when it comes to like home learning and stuff. Uh, but I'll do that in a minute. The next thing I wanna do is go upstairs and restock the snacks because that is important. All right, I have them, all the supplies. Woo! Okay, everything I need to restock these drawers because, and you know what? I'm realizing, whoa, this one is depleted. Let me show you. I wasn't sure about these drawers initially, but because we have smaller kids, and I think for the older kids, it's much more fun for them. Um, as you can see, these were not a hit, so I might take those, <laughs> those out. Um, I did get a bunch of New snacks, I tried to be like semi-healthy with them, but also you can see the Rice Krispies, so it's not that great. But these uh, chocolate-covered raisins, also trying to keep it fun. These, I feel like, are the most healthy. They're the yogurt-covered strawberries, but they don't have to be refrigerated. I have some gummies, some pretzels in here. Oh, Bear Bites, so like a little bit of protein. They're Kodiak um, brand. The vanilla ones, I feel like 
tastes like a graham cracker kind of, but these are chocolatey, but still like on the healthier side with the fiber and stuff. And then I'll have some banana, apple, like go-gurt, not go-gurts, but like the apple pouches. My kids really like the banana ones and they were on clearance, so I grabbed a bunch of them, which was awesome. And then I have, I can't seem to catch my breath, I'm so out of shape. I have some of those crackers, what's in there, cheese, maybe peanut butter. Just kidding, this is peanut butter filled pretzels. So I'm going to, um, see the bottom here, completely depleted, that makes me so happy. These actually are a hit, they came in a huge box. These Thrive Market, uh, like fruit circles. So they come on a sheet like this. See, they got eaten, just didn't get thrown away. These though, oh my gosh, they're so hard to eat. These were from Ikea. So I'm just gonna tidy these drawers up, restock them for the party to come, which is summer. Oh, and I got these rice cakes too. So I thought these were like a, I don't know, how there is rice healthy, better than Doritos. That's my baseline. Is it healthy? Is it better than Doritos? So, all right, I'm gonna stock this up and it's gonna be great. I'm gonna get rid of these because apparently no one wanted them. Okay, I'm living out my dreams right now. A stock, wait, did I stock the fridge yet? You guys, I'm gonna stock the fridge full of waters and I'm stocking the concession stand. Hey, speaking of waters, the fridge that's next to me right here, we need to fix that. That's on, <laughs> Alex and I, recently made like a notes list that we share with each other. And it's kind of like things that need to get done around the house, it's basically a honey do list. And uh, so fixing that fridge is on, on it. I don't wanna buy a new one. My gosh, they're so expensive. And I feel like a part to fix it will likely be easier, but I don't know. We've lived here for a year and a half and haven't figured it out. So fingers crossed. Anyway, that would be nice to throw waters in as well because there's nothing to drink up here unless you want just sink water <laughs> or you can walk all the way to the kitchen. Anyway, I threw some snacks in here. I feel like I have a good balance of healthy versus treaty stuff and the yogurts, by the way, the yogurt covered strawberries, a hit. I asked the kids which ones they liked the best and far and away, those were a crowd pleaser. And then of course the gummies were another hit and I forgot the rest. I think those were definitely top two. Um, and then the rest, you know, they've been eating through them. So I'm excited to have this little station for now. It hasn't been abused, which is nice. So yeah, I just, I never thought I would have a station like this, but here we are and I'm enjoying every second of it. I find myself cruising, cruising down the aisles looking for healthy snacks. I never knew a drawer of food could make me so happy. A drawer of snacks. I love that. I never thought I would be this person, but here we are. <laughs> we'll see how long it lasts, okay? Check on me in a couple months when uh, the drawers are not restocked. This is like special occasion kind of stuff. So beginning of summer, I'm into it. Check on me at the end of summer, right? All right, I made 17 trips up and down trying to bring everything up here so I can organize. You guys, I may have overdone it on the camp mom supplies. But you know, over here at Camp Mom, we pride ourselves on going above and beyond, buying a whole bunch of crap that our kids are going to appreciate uh, when they're older, maybe, who knows. Okay, lots of stuff. I don't have enough bins. I'm gonna work with what I have. And you know what's funny is I searched high and low for this, and it's right there. I don't know where the top is. We'll live without it for now. Needs a good cleaning. Don't think we're gonna get to that. So I have all my kids' art bins up here. I'm going to restock. I did a huge haul of everything that I got them for summertime fun. This isn't all of it. This is just some of it. But <laughs> if you're interested in seeing everything that I got piece by piece, I tried to go as fast as I could, but it was a ton of stuff. Um, I'm just gonna put it in there. I do have a couple of baskets here. And then I think I have some under, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do or how we're gonna organize this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just do it and live my life and my kids are gonna have the best summer ever. <laughs> Heck yes, they are. They're gonna have the best summer ever. I know it seems like I'm putting a lot of effort into making their summer magical because I am, because one, I enjoy doing it, and two, a lot of this stuff is like, uh, how do I word it, free play, where 
you know, yes, it takes me time and energy to put it together initially, but once this stuff is put together, a lot of it is just free play where I can say, okay, grab your craft bin and then they can independently play or play with their friends or play with their siblings or cousins, whoever, and create something. That's why I love their art bins so much. But I was watching someone on Instagram and she was saying it's not her job as a parent to entertain her kids. And sure, it's not. And it's good for kids to be bored and all of that good stuff. But for me, I like giving them things where, you know, it keeps them busy, it keeps their brains occupied and sparks their imagination and all of that good stuff. So I think there's a good balance between that. But also if you're looking for other things to do, you can go to the library My goodness, we used to go to the library so often when I had, you know, just maybe two or three little ones around the same age, you know, three, six, nine, I guess three wouldn't have been. But anyway, two, I went most of the time when I had two little ones and the my local library has so many resources and they do, you know, obviously you can check out books and it's just a great place to go to let your kids explore and they used to have story time and they used to have activities like a craft to put together it was a whole thing and we used to go I don't remember if it was one day or two days a week it was at least one and you know they supplied basically everything that I'm putting in here so they had a lot of crafts and activities to do and then they would also read books together and do story time and stuff like that sometimes they would have plays I say that with a question mark they had something like that maybe puppet puppets or something. It was something to entertain the kids too. But then also you're literally bringing them to the library. So is it your job to entertain them? You know what I mean? So obviously that's what I'm talking about. Like this is just something to do on a similar level, but at home while keeping an eye on them, making sure that they're safe. Maybe you don't have transportation. Maybe you don't have a local library and stuff like that. So anyway, I just love putting these bins together. And of course they keep them all year long too. They've been using them all year long. They have their coloring books in them. They've got construction paper. I shared a reel on my Instagram to give you a really quick overview of it. But, um, anyway, Anything that you think your kids will enjoy. I put stickers in here. I put crayons. I put that, I forgot what, washi tape, which my older kids love. But of course, I made sure to give some to the younger kids too. Markers, except for Meredith. She only gets crayons and hers are with her like workbooks downstairs. So it's not in her art bin. But, you know, pipe cleaners, glue, all of that good stuff. And it is great for encouraging creativity And all of that good stuff. I mean, who doesn't love art? And then, of course, the clay. Oh, my goodness. The clay bins have been the biggest hit so far. I mean, we're only a week and a half into summer. But this is always fantastic when the kids are on board or whatever, which hasn't honestly, it has not happened that much (laughs) lately uh, because there's always something to do around here. Always someone to hang out with. But um, when they do end up saying that, I one of my responses is always, Let's get your art bin. And there's always something to do in there. The stickers, the glue, the silly putty. I mean, it keeps them busy. Endless hours of entertainment. And yes, I said hours. Of course, board games are great. Card games are great. Uno is a good one. We also just bought another one. Oh gosh, I forgot what it's called. Let me look. Okay, so I don't know what happened to my computer. None of my passwords saved. My computer got like cleared out. So I can't log into my Amazon right now, but I pulled up on my phone. Anyway, did you know the slogan for Amazon? Because I had to Google it. Well, Google came up when I just typed in Amazon because that's all I normally put. And then I press enter. Anyway, their little catchphrase is Amazon, spend less, smile more. Hilarious. Anyway, the card game I got is called Cover Your Assets, and apparently it's for kids. We're going to try it out this summer. It was recommended to us by a friend because we said, hey, what, what's your favorite like game? So anyway, we got it. I'll let you know how it is, but, um, you know, go fish, <laughs> matching, always good ones to have in your back pocket. Um, and then also exploring new ones. An adult game. Oh, gosh, what's it called? Bull. Hold on. No, it's called The Pit, and that's a really good one, too, if you're looking for a fun game. Okay, I think I have these all put together. Some more supplies. The labels don't match, but I don't care. This says paint, but everything inside is just from the Dollar Tree. I got these Play-Doh air clay and then clays. There's a ton of them, so I figured they could use their own compartment instead of divvying them up to each child. And then this is just extra supplies. 
And it just has the pom-poms that I didn't feel like putting into little baggies and then a bunch of bracelet making things that we got last year, but no one used them. So hopefully they get used this year if they're more available. And then this right here obviously isn't Play-Doh, but um, this actually is a set and it has a bottom to it, but I can't find it. So I just threw all the paints in there, all the washable paints and then the paint dots this set and then all the paint brushes in the corner so i thought that was fit perfectly so it works out and i didn't buy play-doh this year i did get some from the dollar tree but normally i get a huge pack from amazon the best price to buy play-doh is on amazon it's like a pack of 24 it's a huge box for i don't i can't remember but it's affordable unless you find it at the dollar but even the dollar tree has each container for a dollar 25 so i don't know um, I found like an eight pack of the mini ones for $1.25, so we're gonna see how those last. Meredith leaves the cap off anyway, and it dries out, so it's just for fun. And we have a, a bunch of Play-Doh accessories, which is the most fun, so that's why I like this bin for that, because the bottom held the accessories, and the top, and it all clamped together, so you could use your handle with it, but the top held the Play-Doh bottom for the accessories, so. All right, ignore my messy kitchen in the background. This is life. But while I was going through the arts and crafts, I found a few of the items that I bought off of Amazon. So I thought I'd share them with you as I pack them in my beach bag, which I also got off of Amazon last year. It's not my favorite, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the rope as a handle, that was an oversight. Don't know who approved that. It's fine for a little bit, but when the bag is really heavy, it gets to be a lot, okay. or if you have to carry it for a long time. But I do love how it, how large it is and how there's multiple pockets. So a pocket on either side, that's where I keep the sunscreen and normally the um, hand sanitizer wipes. And then there is a pocket on the inside too. So that's, it's nice and I like the size, but I don't know, the shoulder bit is okay. And I mean, obviously I'm gonna keep it and use it. But anyway, um, I got a couple of things. So let me share, <laughs> I got, this was a pack of three. I thought they were gonna be huge. They're not, but the kids still like them. And then I grabbed these UV sun patches. So I've been seeing these going around. I saw them last, did I see them last year? Maybe, I can't keep track of anything. But I saw them going around and I thought, okay, let me give these a try. They're basically stickers that you put on your kids or yourself, and then you put sunscreen on all over your body and over the sticker. And then as the sunscreen wears off, the sticker will change purple, I guess. So here's the degree on which it will change. And I just thought these were cool to make sure that we're reapplying at the right times. I'm gonna test these out and see how long they stay on because my kids are really active. They're out there sweating, they're out there swimming in the ocean, they're in the pool, all that stuff. So I'm gonna see one, if they stick on, and then two, how effective they are, how effective my sunscreen is, and all that good stuff so I don't know that'll be interesting to find out and then this is one of my favorite finds okay so I'm really pumped about these what is this oh, oh my gosh a change of clothes in here <laughs> we just got back from the zoo and I'm needing to like put my stuff away okay uh because I left it out anyway so these bags first of all amazing fantastic why is no one talking about these actually I did saw, see someone talking about them which is how I learned about them I can't remember who. It may have been on Instagram. You know, I just scroll sometimes. So these bags, they're, they have a thing. It's an adjustable strap, okay? Meredith uses it crossbody. She's so cute. And it has a zipper right here. So a zipper closure. And this is perfect for hunting for seashells. Seashells by the seashore. You just collect your shells and then you shake the sand out of it. You know what I mean? Because before when we would collect seashells, we'd always be like carrying them, you know, or we'd have a bucket. But then later in the day, if you're building a sandcastle, you dump out the shells, fill it with, you know, sand to make a sandcastle. And then sometimes our shells would get lost in the abyss and we would forget about them. So this is the perfect solution. Also great for little toys. Meredith has been playing by the sand and just like putting toys in it and stuff. So it's just a cute little bag. You can really use it for anything, but I thought it would be perfect for collecting seashells by the seashore and it comes in a pack of three pink green blue perfect and then last thing I got off Amazon that I'll share with you here that pertains to like summertime beachy stuff and I need to throw in the you know splash pad bag the pool bag wherever we're going that we need towels are these 
Do you know what this is? I bought eight of them. Don't know why I bought eight, because we only need seven. Did I accidentally get two orange? No, that's red. So they come in all different colors. I got them in all different colors, and they're like camping towels. So they're supposed to be very absorbent. They are obviously very compact. You know, when you look at this compared to the bulkiness of a towel over here, do you know what I mean? So this is a big pet peeve of mine when I'm going somewhere and I have to pack seven towels. Seven is a lot of towels. It takes up a lot of space. I don't have room for really anything else in here. So I had been thinking about these for a long time and I finally jumped the gun this year. I'm just gonna test them out. My one caveat to it is it, this is a size large and this is how big it is. So like it does cover my body. I don't know if you can see the end of it and it does like go around me and it'll be absorbent, quick dry. Did I say that? It's supposed to be quick dry and all that good stuff. So uh, the reviews were saying it's not good if you wanna keep warm. So I'm obviously gonna pack some of these as well, but I thought just for ease of convenience if someone's wet or whatever, this is fantastic. Um, I wish they were a little bigger, but I feel like they're big enough for what they are. And uh, I'm just gonna test these out this summer too. So I'm kind of excited about them. And then obviously they come in like a cute little carrying case with holes in it so it'll dry. If you're a camper, I'm sure you know about this. I'm not a camper. We might go camping this summer. It's on the bucket list. So who knows? Anyway, I'm just gonna shovel these in here and pack it away for next time that we go. I kept them in the wrapper. So I, I, I'm still kind of debating it. I'm like, I think they're like $12 a piece. So it was a, it was a moment, but I think that's going to be a really big space saver. All right. I'm in the barbecue area. I'm going to restock this fridge. I think it's completely empty. Oh no. Uh, it has cheese in it. The fancy kind of cheese. So I'm going to restock that. I've got waters. I've got seltzer waters. That's all we do around here. And uh, Eleanor asked for like the juice boxes, whatever they're called, Capri Suns. And I was like, okay, so I was going through the aisle uh, with Capri Suns. Then I found these. And I was like, what? There used to be something where they sold boxed water, like a box of water. And I was like, that is so cool. It's portable. I don't know why I thought it was so cool. I just thought it was. And uh, I was in school and I guess they were hard to find. I feel like I was in college and I wanted to pack them. Anyway, short story long, here we go. I found these. And I was like, man, this looks real cool. So I got two different flavors. It's called Happy Water, Zero Sugar, Zero Juice, Pure Punch. I don't know what they taste like. <laughs> We're gonna find out. I'm not sure if they're gonna be a hit. This is Grape Divine. But I thought these would be fun to throw in there. We'll see if it'll be an easy swap from like a juice pouch to this. Otherwise, I like to get the um, Oh, what are they called? Not Annie's, I forgot. But there's one brand that I prefer over the rest, but I feel like they all have sugar, it doesn't matter. Also, the LaCroix was on sale, three for 10. Compared to what I normally get, I didn't go to Costco because it just wasn't convenient for me to do that. I didn't go to today either, I went a while ago. There's a mosquito in here! Uh, what do I normally get? Spindrift because it's, well, most of the, well, some of the flavors, I don't know, I'm not a connoisseur, but most of the flavors that I have seen is just carbonated water and then flavored with the fruit. That's it, or citrus. So some of them have like natural flavors and it gives Alex a headache, but this is, you know, for everyone and guests and stuff. Naturally essenced, yeah, with what? What kind, of, that can be like, I've heard, up to 100 chemicals. So anyway, I grabbed these because they were on sale because the Spindrift ones were nearly $7 each. And I was like, uh, no. So if you don't know a hack to get these in the fridge, you bust off the back of it and then you open up the front of it the same way. Woo! Don't let it fall. And then you just push it and it glides right in like magic. I got a medley of colors. That's all I was thinking of. I don't know about flavors. I don't care. I'm not drinking it. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm not drinking it. I don't care. I don't care about any of this. Anyway, did you? Did any of you see the new season of I Think You Should Leave? I haven't seen it, so don't spoil it for me. Anyway, 
Um, I, I don't know why this makes me so happy. Like a nice, clean, organized fridge. It's kind of like all those things on Instagram where it's like perfectly organized and color coded and the edit. Is that what it's called? I think they have a Netflix show or something. I don't know, you guys. Maybe that's why it makes me so happy because drinks stay organized pretty well. You know, it's how often do we grab these? You know, we had the summer bash and all that good stuff, and it still looks decently fine. And th- that's all this fridge is for. I don't throw food in here. I don't have leftovers. Maybe that's why I like it so much because our food fridge just gets drumbled with all the, you know, little things and gets smushed in there and whatever. And then I have to clean it. I'm like, oh my gosh, who spilled the beans over? Anyway, so I think that's why the drink fridge makes me so happy. There she is, looking all beautiful and nicely stocked. I got a lot more LaCroix than that, uh, but <laughs> we'll restock once these deplenish, deplenish, diminish, got water on the bottom, water in the middle, water on top, and that's how we like to hydrate because it purifies the soul. These are so stinking cute. I like can't even believe they come in pouches. It's blowing my mind. Let me show you around. Out here, I organized a while ago, and uh, there's no telling what it looks like now. This is where I keep, oh yeah, well, perfect. <laughs> it looked better before, but the kids have obviously been getting into it and making their own snow cones and stuff. This is where I keep all the snow cone juice and the cotton candy sugar. So we'll eventually whip out the cotton candy machine. Oh, well, that's not on the bucket list. I gotta add that. And then this is where... Oh, by the way, here, here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to grab these. One's a sunscreen. One is a bug spray. But it's so refreshing when you spray it on if it's been chilled. So I'm just going to throw this in here. And actually, this Murphy's bug spray, my favorite bug spray, hands down. It's all natural. And, well, obviously, it's an aerosol. They sell it in a spray, too. But it's a natural bug repellent and it is so refreshing to throw on even not inside of the fridge so this is my favorite one I feel like it's effective and it's just so refreshing but anyway I like to keep my sunscreen in here too some people like it it's refreshing some people don't like it it's too cold but if it's a hot day and you're reapplying sunscreen it feels fantastic when I go to the beach I throw my sunscreen in the cooler with like the food and ice because it keeps it cold but then the other stuff in this drawer is stuff for a glow party that I grabbed, oh gosh, forever ago. Now, it was actually supplies for Avelina's birthday party, um, but we didn't end up using it just because it just got so crazy and chaotic. So we have like balloons and necklaces and bracelets and all that good stuff. And then I have all the bunch of balloons in here. I saved so much space by taking it out of the package and throwing it in a Ziploc bag. There's like a million in here. That is a summer staple. So I just throw it in this drawer and we're good to go. And then this drawer, I do need to restock. We need more cups, we need more spoons. They should be in a package, not just free flying out here. And then this is our ice snow cone maker thingy. We've had it forever and ever and always and we love it so much. Deck of cards, remote, the essentials. Okay, now for the fun part. The, my whole desk setup is just don't look, okay? Got a lot of explaining to do over here. I'm just doing my best. Uh, also, the light bulbs are out just right here in my room. I don't know why, but they are. I think the lighting's pretty okay. Why am I here? Also, I have allergies, so that's why, if you're wondering, which I'm sure you were. So, I need to print out their summer expectation lists, which or their summer checklist. In the past, I have made them very extensive because I have high expectations. <laughs> but this year, I think I'm gonna make them a little simpler, especially for the little ones. Uh, and I, I don't know, I go on Canva to create them. I think it's a great website. I always go here when I need to create something like cleaning checklists or party invitations or whatever. Yeah, I've done a lot. So here's the summer checklist that I have made. It's just so fantastic. I mean, isn't that cool? I'm pretty proud of that. So this is like simple stuff that must get done. And then I wanted them to get 20 minutes of this, two of these, 
and then some enrichment and that's it okay it's very simple actually now that I'm looking at it, I'm like this is great I'm gonna print print up four of them <laughs> but their school also has like summer expectations for them a reading log that I want to get started before we're halfway through the summer and then they have to rush through all of their stuff the last week before school starts there is really like crunch time for them they're like oh my gosh I have projects and so you know there's no breaks in their school plenty of breaks but also keep their minds active right so I am probably gonna revamp this a little bit on canva I am going to print out another um, like writing practice for Meredith I have I think it's in my email but I have it was like a template I don't know I just googled it I don't remember what I wrote name practice sheets or something and then I was able to put her name in and so I have a sheet that she, Meredith can practice her name. She's three years old, she's practicing her writing, and um, I put it in one of those slips that she can just use like a dry erase marker with, and we practice that. She's practicing spelling her name and letters and all that good stuff, so I have a few things to print out for their summer expectations, and I'm gonna get to it. Also, reading logs, I feel like last year i hung them up above above the bucket list and that was like a visual representation of like how many books has each child read uh for them to fill it out i made it simple to take up and down i'm gonna get started on that well check this out i'm looking for like a new summer checklist and another thing i love about canva is that they have like templates that you can just choose from amazing it gives you inspiration and then once you click on it you can kind of manipulate it and change it around and personalize it to what you like cleaning checklist bedtime routine it's got so much and i've made their cleaning checklists from this website too and just i make mine super simple for my kids the simpler the better honestly especially for summertime right loose parenting is what it's all about so i'm gonna uh keep diving into this and then i'm gonna look up a reading log and stuff like that Oh my goodness, after forever, it feels like forever, feels like so long, I printed out all of these. I created some, like obviously I customized some of them, but I found some that were already almost good to go and then I changed a few of the details. But for the most part, I made the summer reading logs, one for each of the children who read, uh, Meredith included, and then instead of like them having to write out each title and then how many minutes and whatever else it had because a lot of the times the bigger girls anyway they read the same book over and over again it's just like I want to make sure see if they're reading 20 minutes a day so I'm just gonna have them color in these popsicles or something I thought this was a cute idea so there it is I don't know I thought it was cute so one for each of them and then I just did summer reading log in fun bright rainbow colors and then for the checklist did this a little differently so last year they looked like this for their summer checklist and i liked that we're going to change it up a little bit and um, i do have to clean these a little bit from i don't know whatever we were working on some of them are dirty it's fine i just have to wipe them down i get these i think they sell them at the dollar tree but i Got them from Target like years ago. I just grabbed a bunch of them. And I did print up uh, another one of these for Meredith. Hers, I don't know, I think it got wet or something. She took it out. I don't know what happened. So I just printed up another one for her. And then I'll show you each individual child's. This is Avelina's. So I just wrote like, you know, a few things for her and then she can check off. It's a weekly thing. So maybe that'll work better than a daily one. And then if she has any notes, or goals that she has for the day or week she can write those in and then you know erase it as she does them but i think hers is pretty simple pretty self-explanatory for each child i do want them to get some kind of exercise or go outside every day read 20 minutes uh do math or english on ixl that's just a go-to for us we love ixl around here tidy room help with chores journal that's always a good one tidy their rooms every night did i write there and then you know the basics breakfast lunch and dinner i didn't write on here normally after dinner they help me in the uh in the kitchen and then this was an interesting one for meredith they had they say for kids a certain age and younger i, I want to say it's like nine and under or maybe seven and under it's older than you would think that you should include pictures 
with your directions so they you know have just a visual anyway wake up go to the bathroom brush teeth get dressed eat breakfast tidy room i excel letters yes meredith does i excel too so good stuff good learning app uh play outside and then be creative in some sense of the word and then up here wentworth's is similar but for him i specifically took two different ones i excel it's his favorite thing to do, you know, is uh, schoolwork. So we have it down here. That just means work in the workbook, do, you know, practice reading, writing, arithmetic, you know, that good stuff. And then over here we have Eleanor's and hers is just, it breaks it into basically a block schedule, morning, afternoon, evening, and then it has certain things to do each time. So they can check it off. And then down here it says points collected. So I'm not sure if maybe I'll have an incentive for them or not. Maybe maybe that'll get them real excited about this. This is their favorite thing. So I'm just gonna pop these into the little laminator sheets and pop them in their rooms. Cause it feels like so much. Okay, I was gonna put together a cute little summer treat and I still kind of am. I'm going to take inspiration from my beautiful boards book, if you can see that. I always look at this, I change it for like the seasons or events and just, it's kind of like a decorative piece. It's one of the only decorative pieces I have since I'm a minimalist. And I look at it all the time, I'm like, that's so cute. So I think I'm gonna recreate it. I feel like I have enough of whatever, so I'm gonna get my round board. Here are some of my supplies. If you can get a better look of that. Okay, I still need to grab some supplies. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I think I'm out of those. I'm kind of rushing because we have to be somewhere in 30 minutes. I have to leave in 30 minutes. So I think, uh, nope, I don't, mm -mm, I don't have all of these. Man, this is supposed to be like a rainbow river. I love that for those Teddy Grahams. <sighs> so, uh, okay, I need to grab this. And then give me just a couple of minutes. I think I can get this out. But for now, I have these buckets that I got last summer when I made some treats. So you can reference that video. But um, they're just cute little buckets and they come with shovels and you can put pudding in them or really whatever treat you want and use this as a spoon. I thought it was such a cute idea. And then, you know, I've got, oh, I gathered some fruit. Do what I can with what I have. I didn't like specifically go shopping for this, but I feel like we can still do our best and recreate something really magical. Okay, so the end result, you'll see that in a second. It wasn't as perfect as I would like it to be, but it was good enough and it was impressive. We ended up going to one of my, uh, where did we go? One of my nephews graduated, so we went to his little graduation party, okay. and although I wasn't supposed to bring any food, you know me, <laughs> I always bring something. I brought a dessert and then this, and I think I brought some watermelon too. I just didn't want it to go bad, and I was like, well, there's gonna be a lot of people there, and food is always a welcomed treat, right? So anyway, I brought this, and everyone ate it. I will say the graham crackers were the last to go. And some of those didn't even go, if you know what I mean. I don't even know where these graham crackers came from. Well, I mean, the box said sprouts. So I wonder if they were like gluten-free or whatever. I didn't eat them. I'm trying to eat less carbs. Didn't work out. I had so much bread yesterday. It's insane. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I threw some whatever fruit I had. I had the blueberries. It's supposed to look like a river. I did not have the tubes for the little bears, but it didn't matter. I just threw them in the water. They were just swimming. They were advanced swimmers. They didn't need tubes and everything worked out. And then some of these Rice Krispies were left over. Someone brought them over our house because we had a get together and we had kind of like a potluck event kind of thing. And these were left over and, you know, everyone was just gnawing on them. And I said, well, let me just, you know, throw some on here to get rid of some of them, you know, and those were gobbled up. And then I think I had oranges and cherries. I mean, it's so versatile. At the end, I give you a little glimpse of Instagram versus reality. And whenever I try to make a board out of this beautiful boards book, it never looks as good as the board portrays it. And isn't that how life goes? Like you see, uh, like, a what are they called? DIY from like Dollar Tree. And the person on YouTube is like, oh my gosh, this is so simple and easy to put together. And I'm, you know, sitting here with hot glue gun all over my wrists. And I'm like, how the heck? It doesn't look anything like what they put together. But you know what? Try as we may. And wherever we fall, it's better than not doing anything at all. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just what I tell myself. Does that look like a beach ball? 
No. Doesn't even look like a beach. I don't even know if it's supposed to look like a beach ball. I feel like in the beautiful boards book, it kind of looks like a beach ball. But then I saw the bears hanging out. I'm like, is this supposed to look like sand? And then what's happening with the rest? Don't ask me questions, man. I guess it's just a fun little board to put together. And then people can use their imagination or not, or just eat it without questioning anything. I did enjoy having those little buckets. I thought that was fun. And then, you know, finding things to put in them. I, I did buy mini M&Ms for something and realized, oh, everyone ate them in their yogurt. And I was like, I can't have anything nice around here. <laughs> but I did have some like mini Reese's that I planned on making brownies with for Brownie Friday. And then I had, I think, gummy bear, like sour gummy bears, like the healthy version of sour gummy bears. I bought those one time. I think uh, Meredith went, me, went with me to the grocery store and asked for them. Anyway, here's the final result. It, it looks okay. It's fine. It's not the best. It's not the worst. But does it look like the inspiration photo? Let's be the judge of that because eventually, I don't know when the heck it's going to happen, but I will scan <laughs> to show you. Uh, the bears are falling all around. It's whatever. Like, it's still kind of cute. And it got eaten. It's food on a board. It's always so much more impressive. To me, it kind of looks like a beach ball. That's what I always thought it was. I guess it's not. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Hope I gave you some good ideas for camp mom setup and all that good stuff. What else do we do? We're about to leave. I can't think of anything. I gotta go change and get out of here. <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you next time.